Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be doing a review of the Windows 8 Consumer Preview. It was just released a few days ago by Microsoft and I actually installed it on my system as like my primary operating system. I've been using it for the past few days and I just thought I'd give you guys a full review of um, what I've learned about it and all of its new features and stuff. So first of all, um, Windows 8 is said to have a significant um, significant performance increase I haven't really noticed this in terms of you know like my normal operations aside from boot up and power down as you guys can see well I'll show you guys how um, significantly faster my computer would boot up and power down and this is in conjunction with my solid state drive so it is already a pretty fast boot up but it is actually faster so right now the system's completely powered off I'm at the power button real quick show you guys the startup time that logo really quick just like that we're in and we oh pulls up on another monitor and then now let me turn it off and it's completely off now. So uh, the first thing you guys might notice here on the screen is that uh, we no longer have a start button. It has instead been replaced by a hot corner type thing. So if you come down here in the bottom left corner, this is where the start button will be. Um, as you, you can see this little thing comes up here and if you click it, instead of having the normal you know little pop-up thing that we see that comes around here, we have this tile interface which basically has all your Windows apps that you download and install and then your um, other programs that aren't you know downloaded through the Windows Store over here that is a game I'm not really sure what that's doing over there so um, here we have you know our Internet Explorer, Maps, Weather, some other like various apps and like if you click it and check it out what I don't really like is that instead of um, you know just showing you the weather in a separate window it actually like full screens it and um, it kind of gives you this this like phone or tablet type view which is because this um, operating system is tailored towards tablets which I think is pretty stupid to release for a desktop because I want to be able to view my weather and also still have complete access to everything else on my computer um, so let's go back to my desktop and I do that by hitting the the Windows and D button since since um, I don't have access to it at all times, I have to use a keyboard shortcut to return to it. Um, let's see, so you, as you guys notice, I pulled up the weather, and if I come to the top left corner here, um, it shows my currently running Windows apps, which are programs that I have installed through the Windows Store, and you can see there goes the weather, and then apparently I opened up my photos a little bit ago. I don't remember doing that, but yeah. So a lot of things could be running side by side if you don't really pay attention to what you got going on. So, um, Likewise, you can uh, close them right here. Just right click, right click, close. I don't think it's very intuitive or cool because, yeah, it's, this isn't a tablet, it's a computer. I'd rather see it in my taskbar than up here. Uh, here on the top right corner, we have these five buttons search, which will give us search functionality to our program. So if I type Photoshop, Photoshop's going to appear. Uh, whoops, what's happening here? and then right below it share which I think is for the home share uh, the Windows home share feature which I don't use so that's irrelevant to me right below that we have the start button which as you guys can see features a new Windows logo the four the four blue icons which also takes us right back to this tile view equivalent to coming down here in the bottom left corner we also have devices which is going to tell you that I have my second screen connected Whoops. and then lastly we have the settings which features the control panel which is normal and I'm sure you guys are all familiar with and also it has this new um, more PC settings which again takes you into that full screen tablet smartphone like view where we could change up our settings which again I don't really like this I mean I guess it can be simpler and easier for you know some users but the more advanced or even like moderately 
familiar PC users aren't going to appreciate this very much, I think. Let's just go over all these really quick. Yeah, so that's that. Whoops. And we also have, um, this is like how we turn off the computer or connect, well, this is also in the bottom right taskbar still, but this is how you turn off the computer. There's no longer, you can't turn it off through this menu. You actually have to come in through here and then click settings and then power, which will also give us our restart and log off feature and stuff like that. Um, okay, so... What else do we got? Oh, okay, so they also have this new lock screen, which I think is pretty cool. Looks nice compared to the old one since we have like a full picture. It's kind of, again, like your tablet, the time, you know, your essential information. And then, so yeah, let's take a look at some, um, some of the apps that it comes installed with and the Windows Store itself. So the Windows Store, it has a few apps. All the ones that it has right now are pretty good. That's because... You know, this is the stuff that Microsoft wants you to see, you know, the introductory software. I haven't really downloaded very many things. I downloaded this physics one, which is cool. Not very practical, but it's cool <laughs> for what that's worth. And, um, yeah, as you can see, you know, we have the top eight apps. The tile, the tile interview, and it categorizes them by, well, it categorizes them, you can see on the top, so... That, these are like the main apps, the ones that you guys probably want to check out. Then we have games over here, social apps, entertainment apps, photos apps. And you know, there's obviously going to be a lot more to come as Windows 8 is released and as more people develop for it. So let's take a look at some of their apps. Um, it goes to maps. I'm going to zoom out so you guys can't see exactly where I am. This With the Windows apps, what I'd say in like an overview, review type thing, is basically expect what you see within your um, Android, Android or iPhone devices, like the apps that you use there. Like a full screen, try to present as much as they can, type view. Um, so like our music. So, I don't know about you guys, but when I listen to my music, I don't want to just listen to music. I listen to my music in addition to doing something else. So like with this app, it kind of, it's not very practical for a desktop user. You don't want to just listen to music. You want to listen to music as you do something else. I mean, you could minimize it, but it kind of takes over everything while you choose what you want to choose. And it's not like if I want to quickly get to an artist, I'm gonna have to scroll through all these slowly, it's gonna take a while, you know, it's not, I can't change this into, a, uh, I can't change this into like a list view or grid view type thing where it'd be very easy to select what I want to listen to exactly, instead I have to, you know, go through this, it looks very nice, I say that much, but it's not, it's not practical, and uh, let's check out um, an app, so we have solitary running now, it's just like an app, you know, you'll see your warnings and if it has a if it has like a maker, they're going to obviously advertise that. Back to the interface um, aspects of it. Um, the Explorer now has this um, ribbon, whoops, the ribbon style that you guys will see in Microsoft Office. I like I I am I'm actually a fan of this ribbon style. It took some time to get used to, but I actually, I really like the way it looks and it gives us you know more. It gives us oops, it gives us more functionality more functionality straight from. Straight from here instead of having to you know click down click the typical drop down menus and stuff like that. Looks really neat. And it you know as as we use it it goes away because it's you know one time function type stuff. They also brought back, brought back this the um, up button, which you guys probably remember from Windows XP. That's um, that's useful for people that aren't very good with keyboard shortcuts and just uses the delete or backspace button. Um, something else that got a big interface overhaul was the uh, task manager. So the task manager is actually very easy to understand now. It looks decent. I mean, it looks really good. 
instead of just being, you know, just for the techies and pretty hard to understand. So if we click performance, you know, we'll see exactly how much of our CPU uh, resources are being used and in like real time along with the memory disk, all that stuff. It's, it's, it gives you a nice little view, kind of like the widgets that you'd download as a Windows Windows uh, Vista or 7 sidebar type thing. And here was like my app history. Yeah, so that's the task manager. Uh, another feature that Windows 7 has, back to our apps type thing, it comes with a built-in PDF reader. So this is actually for a speech that I had to make in one of my classes. Um, yes, it's it's uh, pretty pretty nice for you know reading PDFs, but it's not good if you're like trying to do an assignment and view the PDF as you're trying to do the Word document for it. Like I experienced, I had to use Adobe Reader for this. In terms of compatibility, I haven't had any programs that that haven't worked for me. Uh, every single so every single piece of software that I use has installed and worked perfectly. I have had issues with um, iTunes, but I think that's because of a driver issue with with my Beats Audio on my MV14. I'm not really sure. I had this I had this big thing where like if I if I'm listening to music and I go on a YouTube video and like I switch between the two and pause them for a bit, the iTunes app will stop working. It's really weird. I can't explain it and I can't recreate it. Um, aside from that, let's see, everything performs phenomenally. I'll do my, my uh, every, every program in the app drawer open up real quick. So let's do one of these. Everything you know, but this is mainly because of because of the fact that I have an SSD that has nothing to do with Windows 7. I'm just showing you guys that it performs as normal. Oops, probably shouldn't be opening closing my screen recording software. Actually, it takes longer to close everything than it does to open it up. yeah so that's that um I have had some issues with battery life I think that's also my system's fault again because oops I think that's my system's fault because it doesn't seem to work really well with my uh, my graphics card which is both the Intel HD and the AMD Radeon 6770M and it's supposed to switch between the two as needed you know if I'm doing if I'm gaming, then it's going to use a 6770M, or I think 6660M, one of the two. It's going to use that, and then if I'm just doing, you know, nothing that requires a uh, graphics card, then it's going to use the Intel HD to save battery life. I'm not really sure what this is. Um, all my stuff works, my memory, memory card thing works. I have, I have had some, uh, I can't get my Beats Audio drivers to work, which doesn't really matter, because it's not that big a deal it's just like a little equalizer um also my fan my fan um is like out of control sometimes it'll be running sometimes my fan will be spinning really fast even though i'm not doing anything uh cpu intensive or gpu intensive so that's pretty weird that probably also has to do with you know incompatible drivers or something like that my battery life has gone down significantly with windows 8 Again, probably a driver issue because in terms of performance, I'm pretty sure Windows 8 is, uh, is uh, you know, it uses your resources a lot better. So if any of you guys use two monitors, your second monitor will not just be like a separate display, it will also have your taskbar with, you know, all your programs ready to be used and stuff like that. And also your screensaver is going to be scaled to full size and it won't be, you know, reduced to, to um, you know, the native resolution of your display. If like if your laptop display is a 1366 by 768, your screensaver will actually be, you know, the resolution of your monitor and not your laptop. Um, what else is that? 
uh, these things that you see here, these uh, these are actually not part of Windows 8. This is a program called Fences. You guys can download it for free if you want. They can. It kind of allows me to keep my desktop organized and you know allow me to access my main files that I use the most. Pretty frequent, or allows me to access my main files very easily. Oh, and uh, for all of you who who swear by the Windows Experience Index, uh, you guys might have to be upgrading your system soon because now it rates your system on a scale of 1 to 9.9, .9, so you can no longer max out at 7.9. So when Microsoft actually releases Windows 8, I hope they actually give the user the option to choose whether or not they want to use this tile interface with the with the apps that you know completely take over your system and actually allow us to you know windows window the the the, um, pro, the apps instead of them being full screen so we could use them as we do something else and um and i say that because in in um in terms of performance the system is is pretty damn good it runs really fast and i know i know it'll give me better battery life once you know once AMD and everyone releases the proper drivers for this system. Yeah, so that's my review of Windows 8. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll respond to those. Uh, also, if you guys happen to like my video, make sure you like it by clicking the button down there and subscribe to my channel. Thanks. See you guys.